Uh, so like if I, it's at 38, 37, 36, 35, if I hit stop and wait five seconds, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five, it should be below 30 now. And it is, it's working. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video we are making a tutorial on how to make a countdown timer in days, hours, minutes, and seconds. We're also going to try to make it persist. Uh, so the countdown timer will still be counting down even if you're not in the game. That way it will just pick up uh, or whenever you join the game again, uh, it won't just restart the timer. It will just continue or it will load the current state of the timer. So let's just get started. Just go to your starter GUI, add in a screen GUI. We're going to just call this countdown GUI and we are going to add in a text label and this will be countdown text I'm just going to put mine in the center uh, near the top we need to go to the let's make the background transparent Uh, for the size it's using offset, we need it to use scale. So to do that, just do like 0 0.2. Uh, it really doesn't matter, just anything between 0 and 1. Offset 0. Offset 0. Then we can just adjust it however we want. I'm going to get mine centered. Let's go down to the font. And I like for Doka 1. Let's make it bold. For the text color, we will do red. Text size, let's crank this up to be 64. Or actually, a little bit smaller. We'll do 46. Text stroke transparency, I'm going to turn mine. No, not that. That's text transparency. I was looking for text stroke transparency. Turn it down so there's a black outline. And for the text, we're just going to say zero, 00. This doesn't matter because we're going to override it with a script. But just as a placeholder, just do that. So that'll be our days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Alright, so right click on the, or not right click, add in on the countdown text add in a local script and we're going to call this countdown script and we're just going to put a comment at the top for what the script is countdown script client side So we need to get the countdown label. So we will say local countdown label equals script dot parent. And we will say local, we need to define the target end time. Uh, so, so we need to set like the target end time So we need to say OS time plus, and in parentheses, just to make it easier to read, we're going to say seven for seven days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. That is seven days in seconds. So add a comment here, just to find the target in time. For example, seven days from now. Now we want to update function to display the time in the format zero 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 zero. 
which is days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So the function we need to do is local function update timer. <clears throat> and inside the function, just say local current time equals equals OS dot time. Now we need a remaining time. Target time minus current time. And then we want to ensure the count down doesn't go negative. So to do that, we just say if remaining time is less than zero, then remaining time equals zero. Now we want to calculate the days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So we'll say local days equals math dot floor remaining time divided by 24 times 60 times 60. Now we need to get the hours math dot floor remaining time Then we need to do a modulo symbol, which is just a percent symbol. Parentheses 24 times 60 times 60. Divided by 60 times 60. Now we need to get the minutes. Remaining time, modulo 60 times 60, divided by 60. Last but not least, we need to get the seconds. Remaining time, modulo 60. Then we want to format the time as 00, 00, 00, 00, 0, 0, 0 which is days, hours, minutes, seconds so we will say local formatted time equals string dot format and just copy what I do here so modulo 0 to D colon modulo 0 to D colon modulo 0 to D colon modulo 0 to D and outside the quote do a comma days hours minutes seconds then we want to update the label text to do that we just say countdown label dot text equals 4 matted time and that's it for our function now we just got to run the timer every second and to do that we will use a while loop we'll just say while true do and then we will run our function every second for update timer and then wait one second you can also, this is optional, but we could say if remaining time 
equals zero, then we just want to print countdown complete. And then you could trigger any event here, whatever it is that you're counting down to. And if we hit play, it should work. Let's cross our fingers and let's see what happens. And yeah, it seems to be working. It was, it started at seven days, 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, and then it just went down and it seems to be working correctly. Uh, there's no way I could really test out this timer completely in this video. Um, but yeah, so, but we're not done yet though because it's very unlikely you're gonna have a, a countdown timer in days and seconds and uh, the user's going to be logged into the game that time, that entire time. Like if we press play, it's just gonna keep starting over at seven days every time. So we wanna make it persist. We wanna make it so if the user logs off like if the countdown is seven days and a user logs off and doesn't play your game for two days and they log back in, that the timer should be at five days now. It, we don't want it starting over every time that the user logs into your game. So in order to do that, we need to make a server script. Uh, so go to your server script service, add in a script, and then we're gonna call this countdown server script. Put a comment at the top, countdown. So we need to get a reference to our data store service because we need that in order to make the timer persist. And so we need to make a countdown data store. And so we will just say data store service, get data store, countdown store. Now we want to define the countdown duration. which will be seven days and seconds is what we're gonna set it for. So we'll say local countdown duration equals seven times 24 times 60 times 60. And then we need to make a function to save the target in time so we will say local function save target time and we will say local current time equals os dot time and this is the current time in seconds and we want to say local target time equals current time plus count down duration. And this is the target in time in seconds. And then now we want to save the target time in the data store. So we're going to use a P call. So local success error equals p call pass in a function and we will say countdown data store set async and target time comma target time
if not success, then we want to warn fail to save countdown time. All right, we're done with that function. So now we need a function to retrieve the target in time. So we will say local function get target time. So we will use another P call. We will say local success target time equals P call function. And we will just return the countdown data store. Get async target time. And if success and target time, then return target time. Else, we want to warn fail to retrieve count down time target time and we will return nil and I think that should do it for that script for the server script but we need to go back to our local script and we can actually get rid of this since we're setting the uh, timer duration in the server and we will say uh, yeah so when we update the timer now we are actually just going to pass through the target time all right so after the function we just want to uh, what do we want to do we want to get the target time from the server when the player joins so to do that uh, let's go to the top and let's get a reference to our replicated storage because we're going to put in a remote function into the replicated storage and use it to communicate with the server and then down here we can just say replicated storage wait for child we're going to call it get target time and then we will invoke server function target time and then inside of that we can just cut this and paste that while loop in there and I think that should do it we just need to go to our replicated storage and add in a remote function name that remote function to be get target time so then go back to go back to your server script and we want to get a reference to the replicated storage and then we want to get that reference to the remote function Replicated storage, wait for child, get target time. And then down at the bottom, we uh, need to hook up that remote function to our client script. So when the client requests the target time, 
we will get the target time. Oops. Get target time dot on server invoke. Is that right? Is it yeah. The name of that function is get target time on server invoke equals function. And then we will just retrieve the target time from the data store. And to do that, we just say local target time equals get target time and return target time. So I was recording and uh, had it pause. But what you need to do is you need to go to your uh, countdown uh, client script, the local script, and you need to change this line. It, will, it was the invoke server and we were passing through the function. You just need to make, make it look like this at the bottom. Um, so we got local target time equals replicated storage, wait for child, get target time, invoke server. And then we are just running the timer every second with a while loop. Uh, while true do update timer target time wait one second and yeah that should get you on the same page as me if you hit play now it's going to since we started this uh, a few minutes ago I guess 12 minutes ago um, it's picking up uh, 12 minutes after we started which is perfect it, it means it's working uh, so like if I, it's at 38, 37, 36, 35, if I hit stop and wait five seconds, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five, it should be below 30 now. And it is, it's working. Um, and yeah, guys, that's it. It's, it's working. We got everything working the way we wanted to. Um, if you followed along and you made it this far and it works for you, thank you so much for watching. I uh, really do appreciate it. The longer you watch my videos, the more it helps out with the algorithm. And yeah, I will put a comment down in the comment section with the scripts copied and pasted. Uh, I will also put this on my Patreon so you can download it for free over there. And with that being said, I'm going to end this video. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one.